Hi, my name is Mark Schultz. This is a preview of my talk, Securing Approximate Humble Market Encryption Using Difficult Privacy, based on joint work with Bayou Li, Daniele Machancha, and Jessica Sorrell. The talk concerns fully homomorphic encryption. A crypto system is said to be fully homomorphic if it admits two privacy homomorphisms, or ways of combining encryptions of M and M prime into encryptions of their sum and their product. This suffices to compute arbitrary Boolean functions. It's often formalized as an evaluation algorithm, such that on input a circuit D and an encryption of a message M, one obtains a ciphertext C prime that decrypts to D of M. Sometimes it only decrypts to a nearby value, though. The difference from the correct value is known as the error. There are many constructions of FHG in the literature. CKKS in particular is not correct and instead has small error. This scheme will be of central importance uh, to our work. Lee and Machancho have suggested that NCPA security is the wrong notion for the passive security of incorrect crypto systems. For correct crypto systems, decryptions of honestly generated subjects are simulatable and therefore give no information to an adversary. For incorrect crypto systems, these decryptions can leak information even if the user is only honestly interacting with their oracles. This occurs for CKKS and leads to a distinguishing attack and key recovery attack. Lee and Machancho proposed a new security definition, which they call NCPAD security or NCPA with decryption oracles. This is different from NCCA security, as you can only decrypt honestly generated ciphertext. In the setting of correct encryption, it's identical to NCPA security, but as CKKS shows, for incorrect uh, encryption, there's a separation between the two notions. Lee and Machancho left it as an open problem to achieve NCPA D security for CKKS. After they published their attacks, many libraries implemented countermeasures. These all roughly post-process decryption by inducing large enough noise in some way, where large enough is some uh, controlled by some user-controlled parameter. Our work is to characterize what large enough means concretely. In the full version of our work, we use a variant of differential privacy and consider two separate notions of correctness. In this preview, I will simplify to Gaussian noise flooding and static correctness. By static correctness, I mean that the norm of the error can be publicly bounded by some function of both the circuit to evaluate and some bound of the norm of the input. The concrete security notion we use is that of C bit security of Machancho Walter. A particle is said to have C bits of security in some cryptographic game. If for every adversary, there is a, a concrete trade off between the running time of the adversary, T of A, and the advantage that adversary achieves in the game. We relax this notion to something we call CS bits of security. Where now, for every adversary, either this uh, inequality uh, bounding the trade-off between the T of A, the running time, and the advantage is satisfied, or a separate inequality bounding solely the advantage of the adversary achieves is satisfied. This is a concrete weakening of the notion of C-bit security that's easiest to see graphically. This is a graph of the logarithm of the running time of the adversary to the logarithm of the inverse of the advantage. In terms of this graph, a protocol has 128 bits of security if the parameters that uh, any adversary achieves attacking this protocol falls into this blue region. In particular, there are no adversaries that achieve the parameters that are contained in the white region. The notion of CS bit security enlarges this set of allowed adversaries slightly. For the particular example of S equals 96 bits of security, it enlarges it to this cyan region. This set of uh, additionally allowed adversaries is a non-trivial set. There are new adversaries allowed by this attack, but all of these adversaries have explicitly low advantage. In the example at hand, all of them have an advantage less than 2 to the minus 96, uh, independent of their running time. And if one wants to achieve higher advantage, one has to go back to the old adversaries, the, the ones that previously existed from the 128-bit security definition. So while this does concretely introduce new adversaries and is therefore a weakening of the security notion, it's in a controlled way uh, that we view as likely acceptable in many situations. Using this novel notion of concrete security, we're able to get significant gains. Our main theorem can be phrased as follows. We see KKS as C bits of NCPA security post-processing by adding S over 2 plus the logarithm of the bound of the size of the error contained in the ciphertext bits of IID Gaussian noise achieves CS bits of NCPAD security. This is S over two additional bits of noise if one thinks about it. 
It's nearly tight for S bits of NCPAD security. In particular, we have an attack that shows that S over four additional bits is insecure. Uh, by using this weaker notion, this CS bit securing notion, we can obtain substantial gains for even a moderately large S. Concretely, using S equals 96, we can attain a countermeasure that has 15 bits of smaller uh, uh, parameters, which is 20% of the total noise that we would have. And for S equals 64, this becomes 30 bits smaller, which is roughly 35% of the total noise. Uh, while we apply this to the setting of FHE, we expect this to be broadly applicable whenever one is compute, uh, combining a computational primitive, in our case FHE, with some statistical primitive, in our case differential privacy. In summary, we find that post-processing with between 25 and 82 bits of additional Gaussian noise that suffices to achieve 128 S bits of NCPAD security for a, a wide range of S between 32 and 128 in particular. The precise S which one chooses uh, should be application dependent in a way that uh, will be elaborated on in the full version of the talk. CKKS implementations that support 128 bits of plaintext precision can easily fit our countermeasure. Implementations with only 64 bits of plaintext precision may be more difficult to uh, secure with our countermeasure. While one can secure them likely by choosing small enough S or by expo exposing less plaintext pr uh, precision to uh, users of the library, this may uh, make CKKS in these small precision uh, settings less competitive with other FHG schemes. While our countermeasure uses large amounts of noise, we have a lower bound on this noise, at least in the setting of C-bit security with Gaussian noise, so this large amount of noise does seem intrinsic. 